live from the heart of North Georgia Hills, Atlanta, Georgia, hour one. Let me make my drive in begins right now. I am your lovable, huggable, and adorable host. Viewers of them who began running for cover and running for their lives when the gunfire started. At this point, police are telling us uh, 14 people total were shot, two of them dead, a man and a woman, 12 others injured. I want to zoom in and show you uh, the, what's happening here at the scene. You can see uh, crews from New Jersey State Police and their canine teams looking for evidence, a grid search underway after the shooting broke out. Witnesses are telling us this was supposed to be a celebratory party, nice weather, uh, restrictions easing, so they gathered at this large yard uh, for a celebration, but then at midnight, witnesses say they've started to hear gunshots coming in from the tree line, from the woods, and that's when everybody started running for cover. Two people died, a 30-year-old man and a 25-year-old woman. High pitched, so I always make fun of him for it until now. So I always make fun of him for it until now. Dissident Belarusian journalist on board was detained. State media in Belarus said the plane was forced to land because of a bomb scare. Here, the foreign secretary said the outlandish actions would have serious implications. Our diplomatic correspondent James Landale has the story. 
This is not where flight FR4978 was supposed to be this afternoon, on the ground at Minsk airport. The Ryanair flight, with about 170 people on board, left Athens this morning bound for Vilnius. But just before the aircraft entered Lithuanian airspace, it suddenly headed east. According to Ryanair, the crew were warned of a potential security threat and ordered to land at Minsk. For good measure, a Belarusian warplane armed to the teeth was dispatched to escort the aircraft in. But no bombs were found on board. Instead, this man was taken off the plane and arrested. Roman Protasevich is a well-known Belarusian opposition journalist and is wanted by the authorities for organising protests last year. According to the Belarus State News Agency, the operation was ordered personally by the country's authoritarian president, Alexander Lukashenko, who's faced growing opposition since disputed elections last year. Belarus's exiled opposition leader said Mr. Protasevich's life was in danger. Today, Lukashenko personally caused an international scandal, used military aircraft against civilians of Belarus and European countries to arrest a single person. No one else is safe. Anyone can be in Roman Protasevich's place. After several hours on the ground, the plane and remaining passengers were allowed to leave and arrived this evening in Vilnius, as outrage spread across Europe, with several countries accusing Belarus of an act of state terrorism. In a tweet, the Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab said he was coordinating with allies and warned this outlandish action by Lukashenko will have serious implications. At Vilnius airport, supporters of Mr. Protasevich waited in vain for his arrival as they contemplated just how far President Lukashenko will go to suppress opposition. Tomorrow, EU leaders will meet to discuss what price he should pay. James Landale, BBC News. traveled alone from Central America. Their families hoped they'd be able to begin a new life, but a BBC team has heard accounts from children of being neglected and held in cold and filthy conditions. Hilary Anderson's report begins on America's southern border.
Midnight on the Rio Grande. Smugglers ferry migrants across to the land they've dreamed of. But to fear. Many of the adults will be deported in the morning. There are children here too, traveling alone. Most of them will stay. Jordi has fled violent gangs in Guatemala. Tonight he has a new dread. America's camps for migrant children. Nos tienen una hielera, nos hacen preguntas y todo eso.